Good morning, everyone. Welcome to 1111 and Happy New Year. Welcome to 2021. I'm Tom McDermott, the pastor of the 1111 community, and I'm so glad you're joining in this morning. I'm also one of the associates at First Methodist of Fort Worth. And while you're registering your attendance, I want to invite you to take a moment and also take advantage of the online offering that's there if you'd like to do that. If you're visiting with us the first time, I'd love to see your address so that we can send you one of these 1111 tumblers. These are great. Sip, breathe, smile. Nice little daily and moment-to-moment reminder. Send you one of these in our face mask, our, our um, 1111 face mask. So uh, give us your info and we'll do that. And while I'm giving some announcements here, um, I hope if you're on Facebook, you'll also take advantage of those little comment spaces. Let us know how you're doing and who you're with. A couple of things to talk about. This last week on the 11th, I'm, I'm sorry, on December 30th, we had our first 1111 gathering on Zoom. And it was great. We had a huge turnout, a great crowd. A lot of you were probably there. And it was quick, but it was wonderful. We took advantage of being together just to kind of see each other's faces, to welcome 2021, to say farewell to 2020, but especially to say our thanks and and congratulations to um, Sharm Robarts, our church community activist, I'm um, activist, our church community um, advocate, and also our 1111 team member. She's been a big part of our worship here. You all know that. And and uh, Brad and I are going to miss her. She's been integral. Charm, you've been a wonderful part of what we've been doing from the very beginning, uh, from seven years since I started at least, and um, just going to miss you. It's going to be a big gap that we're going to have to fill, but we just appreciate so much your creativity and your leadership and your scholarship and wish you the best. Um, we're going to do another Zoom in the future. That was such a great experience. We'll definitely do another one. Get you the information on that as that turns out. And then something else to announce is that... Um, in about three weeks or so, four weeks, I'm going to go on a renewal leave. Every six to seven years, the clergy in our conference and in our church are granted uh, time apart to renew, to rejuvenate, to kind of renew our spirits. And that's going to happen at the end of January. I'll be gone for about eight weeks with a little stop back here in the middle of that time. Linda was kind of laughing about me taking the next couple of months. She's like, where are you going to go right now? And I'm um, going to still figure that out, but um, I didn't want to wait and do it later because I figured sometime in April, not only will we have Easter, but we'll probably start getting back together, I hope, in person in some form or fashion uh, by that time, April or May. So I didn't want to miss that. So I'll be gone uh, February and March, be back in the middle of that. Linda McDermott's going to preach. Uh, DeAndrea Dare is going to speak, uh, take a guest spot. Um, uh, Todd Kirk. Charm Robarts, Linda's going to be kind of overseeing everything while I'm out. Um, and so um, I'm looking forward to this. I'm so, we're so blessed and fortunate to have a church that can sponsor that and can support that. And so I'm looking forward to that needed time to rejuvenate, to rethink, um, kind of debrief about where I've been in the seven years of our community and where we might go and think through that. So you be thinking about me while that's happening. I'll talk more about that in the future. Listen, something else happened this week. That's, um, that's been kind of a tragic, sad moment for us. Um, many of you knew John Howard. John Howard has been our director of, of staff, our executive director for three or four years or so, and um, an active member of this church for many years. Um, also his wife Liz and their two daughters and son, and I even taught their daughter and, and their younger daughter in Sunday school, Maggie. And uh, sadly, John passed away this past week uh, from COVID complications. And uh, we're just torn up, we're just broken about it been very hard for for us as a church and for us as a staff many of you knew john and know the family and um just wanted to let you know if you didn't know that already and be keeping their family in your thoughts and prayers in this time we'll get information out when there'll be some kind of memorial service for them but just keep them in your thoughts and prayers right now um it's a difficult time has been but this hits close to home and so um we share in their grief and we also um uh, bless them in this in this time of, of sorrow. So, wanted to let you know. Um, we'll start here in just a second with uh, DeAndrea Dare offering our prayer, but I'm going to do our welcome candle. And so I invite you to join in with me as we have our welcome. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you have broken your vows a thousand times. Come yet again. Good morning. It's a new year, a time to begin again, a time to reflect 
and a time to look forward, a time to admit that last year was a very, very difficult time for many of us to grieve the losses that we have experienced and we have felt so deeply that have been a part of our world, our personal lives, and our very own community. It is a time to hold on to the lessons that we have learned. And it is a time to look forward, to hold to all that is good that might sustain us and to look to how we might be able to hold to the love that is the greatest part of life and spread that love by being present with one another. It has been said that love is the only sane and satisfactory answer to the problem of human existence. And so in this year, in this time and space that we share together, even when we are apart, may love surround us. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, the giver of all good things, the one that embodies love, both in the past and the present and in the future. May we live and lean into that love and may we embody and share that love in the difficult times when we are confused, in the times where our hearts break, in the times where we experience anger and where we are just mad. May we also spread love in the times where there is joy and great celebration that is to be found. In the midst of all of this, we realize that all of these emotions, all of these feelings, and all of these experiences are life, and we are living in the midst of it. So may we reflect, may we hold true, and may we look ahead, knowing that love will guide us and that we must trust in the goodness of that love knowing that we can also be love for this world. In the name of the one in whom we live and move and have our being, we pray. Amen.
So everyone, I'm going to begin my thoughts this morning with a reading from 1 John. I'm reading the epistle of 1 John chapter 4, just some selected verses. And I'll be reading from the message version. I love the way in which Eugene Peterson um, interprets this, this passage. But it also speaks to something I think we might take with us into 2021. So here's the reading. My beloved friends, let us continue to love each other since love comes from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and experiences this intimate grounding in God. God is love, so when we take up permanent residence in a life of love, we live in God and God lives in us. This way, love has the run of the house, becomes at home and mature in us so that we are free from worry or from judgment, and our standing in the world is identical with the Christ. There's no room for fear in love. Well-formed love banishes all fear. So I have a friend, Skip Johnson, who lives in uh, north of Atlanta in Georgia. He's a pastor, Methodist pastor, and a professor at Candler School of Religion, teaches in the psychology area. And he always sends us Christmas cards. Um, this one this year was particularly interesting. They usually have adventures that they've done throughout the year, but of course they couldn't do much of that this year. But one of the things this one was interesting was what it said on the cover, first of all. It was just a nondescript cover, but in bold print it said, Will 2020 ever end? And then in small print inside parentheses it said, Oh, and yeah, Merry Christmas. When you open up the cover, though, that's what I thought that was interesting I want to share with you. He had placed a checklist for leaving 2020 behind, a wellness checklist for leaving 2020 behind. And then he listed these four questions. You know, as you move from one relationship, one moment, one period of time in your life to the next, are you ready? What are you taking from your experience now that will equip you for the future kind of thing? And so he had this wellness checklist. Interesting questions to think about as we do the same. Are you able to step outside of chaos and still laugh at yourself? Is your imagination still intact and healthy? Can you appreciate the gift of wonder? You know, as you move from this reality we've been in, can we still appreciate the gift of wonder? Will we need that as we go into 2021? Have you learned how to avoid the drain of despair and the clutch of cynicism. That one's one I have to think about. I, you know, I shared with a friend that this idea of moving to, it can't get away from 2020 fast enough. I am ready for the next year. But he kind of laughed at me and he kind of told me a joke. He said, yeah, really? Um, you know, this mess that we're in, that, that was his word, mess. I mean, I'm sorry, that wasn't his word, that's my word. <laughs> he said, this mess that we're in, you know, it ain't over yet. He said, just think about it. We're going to have a 2021 and then a 2022 and then a 2023. And the fact is, is that they're all going to be 2020s. We could have nine more years of this 2020 mess. And I laughed at the joke, but, but I realized too, there's some truth to that. There's some truth to this idea that if we're not aware, if we're not honestly assessing who we are in this time and how we've been, how will we move into the next time differently? What are we taking with us that can help to transform this new time and continue to be on this path of shalom that Lynn and I have talked about for so long, this path of how we exist in right relationship with one another? The reality is, is it's been such a hard year. I, I agree, I can't wait to get past this experience. But the reality is also true that we're not going to move into something that's going to be beautiful and perfect and stress-free. We've still got this mess for some time. But how long depends on what we've learned. I think if we look back at the year, we can say we've learned a number of things. Certainly, we've become more aware of who, who we are in relationship to the injustices around us. And we become more aware of just how extreme those injustices are, those racial injustices, inequalities, and the violence. We become aware of our own involvement and our own relationship to health and to illness with this virus and with the environment. And, in, and yes, 
there have been so much trauma and there's been so much death around this. And, and I, I agree we could have prevented so much of the death, hundreds of thousands of deaths, and I'm sure we could have prevented some of that had we behaved differently. I know that. All of us, I speak universally. But at the same time, have we not also become aware of how resilient we can be when the proverbial rug is literally yanked out from under us? Finding new ways of being in work, finding new work that we didn't think would ever be possible or that we'd find interesting even. Finding new ways of relating to one another when we have to be socially distanced and when, when our venues are closed and our churches are closed, finding new ways to engage even this. I, I mean, the reality is I was, I was telling Linda, I was never trained in this, this kind of acting on camera to pre-record a service. I have no idea what you're doing. I, I have none of the feedback that I was trained as a speaker, as a performer, and as a preacher. I was, I was trained in that kind of reality, that, that interactive feedback. I don't get any of that. And, and so for all I know, you're doing dishes or you're working on a project or you heard the song and now you've moved to the other side of the house. You'll be back in a few minutes to see if the next song is happening. I, I have no idea. I presume that you're there and I act as if I wasn't trained to do that. And yet I've developed some sense of comfort, if not um, competency, but certainly some level of comfort with it. That's what I, I mean, we take away some gifts in spite of the tragedies that we've experienced both collectively and personally, and some very close to home. But still, I have to say, what concerns me is that I feel like I'm not ready to move. I'm not ready for us to move on. In fact, I'm kind of angry about it. I, I think, I just don't think we're there yet. And, I, and I'm getting angry with what I'm seeing around me. Not simply angry because of the personal loss, but angry because it feels like we're still not there. I feel like Till Eulenspiegel, the German um, folk hero who was kind of a foolish, wise one. His wisdom was in his foolishness, right? And so this, the Till Eulenspiegel has a story about him. He's making his pilgrimage up a mountain with other pilgrims. And they had a multi-day you know, day journey ahead of them to go to this cathedral. And as they're going up this mountainside, it's getting steeper and steeper. And the steeper it gets, the more jovial and lighthearted Till Eulenspiegel seems to be. While meanwhile, the other pilgrims are feeling exhausted and beat up. And finally, when they get to the top, they notice that Till is now getting sad. And they're saying, Till, what, what's the matter with you? you? You come up the mountain, you're happy, but here we're at the top. We've reached the top. It's successful. It's a beautiful view. And now you're sad. And he looks back and he says, oh, yeah, it's a beautiful view. Sure. But have you noticed the mountains that are still ahead of us? There's this wisdom in the journey is up and down. The bigger picture is, is a mix. It's life, life is messy. It's, it's complex. How do we move through it with a sense of presence and purpose? the ups and downs. That's, that's really what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like we're not ready for that. I'm feeling like Greg Falker in that scene of Meet the Parents. You, you remember, Lynn and I talked about this way back at the beginning of the pandemic. We brought up this scene and we thought we'd only have a few more months before it was all over with and yet here we are. Um, and that's that scene where Greg, played by Ben Stiller, Greg and his father-in-law and his father, they're arguing in the jail cell and they're fighting. And then each one of them from their own perspective, they're not hearing each other clearly. And the jail, the guard comes over and he's about to open it. The judge says, let him on out of there. And Greg walks over to the, to the uh, bar, the, uh, in, the door to the jail and he grabs the bars and slams it shut with him still in it. And he looks at the guard and says, we're not done here yet. That's, that's what it feels like. We're not done here yet. So I want to offer a song in just a minute. And it's a song by Guy Clark, but it, it comes to mind right now as we're thinking about how we make this move from 2020 into 2021. And it's a bit of a leap, I think, because it's risky and it requires a, a kind of a way of unknowing, kind of a, a, a way of seeing things new and possible, even when it seems like it's not there. A leap, if you will. And so I, I, I started singing this song at camps. And it's a song that Guy Clark wrote. And I started noticing this girl for, at one of the camps where I'd been singing this song. I was invited to come to the cabin. This girl named 
um, Laramie uh, Wilson, she was about 10 years old and she had lined up the bunks in her cabin. It's a high ceiling cabin. She'd lined them up a little further apart than normal, about four feet apart as opposed to three. And the kids in the cabin, the other girls were just watching as she was leaping from one cab one bunk to the next, screaming out, don't forget your cape. Don't forget your cape. Don't forget your cape. And the counselors kind of laughed and said, you see what your song's doing. And, and this was the song that I sang. When now he's eight years old with the flower set cape tied all around his neck. Standing up on top of the garage and he's figuring what the heck Screwed his courage up so tight, well the whole thing came unwound He got a running start and bless his little heart, he headed straight for the ground Cause he's one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith Spread your wings and hold your breath and always trust your cape sack cape tied all around his dreams full of piss and vinegar and he's just busting at the seams stuck his finger up in the air said it's gonna be do or die and he wasn't afraid of nothing and he figured that he could fly he's one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith you hold your breath spread your wings and always trust that cape sack cape still tied around his head and jumping off a of garage is all his life probably will be till he's dead and all his friends just saying he was acting like a kid well he did not know that he could not fly and so he did cause he was one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith you gotta hold your breath and spread your wings and always trust your cape said he's one of those who knows Spread your arms, don't forget that cave. So I hope you enjoyed that song. I love singing that song, um, even today. I sang it at all the camps for years, this Guy Clark song. And I, it was always been a song that I figured was really for adults, right? <clears throat> because adults are really about this in, this sort of loss of innocence, this loss of curiosity and wonder and, and sort of trust in making the leaps that life often requires in some of the most difficult times. And yet the kids really identified with it, obviously, because I think innately, instinctively, what kids were doing in these camps, what I was seeing was most of these kids would face their their mortality, their, their more immediate sense of mortality with this sense of, you know, every moment's important. And not simply important, but possible. Possible. Filled with all sorts of experience that hasn't happened yet. So they would see things as new. Uh, most of the kids. Some of the kids still approach things with fear and anxiety or with judgment or with their own parents' anxieties. But most of these kids would just, for example, on the... On the um, platform at the top of the zip line, they'd just take that leap. 40, 50 feet up above the ground, 100 yards out and over a valley, and they would just leap. Uh, adults, on the other hand, would find themselves sitting on that platform for a long time before they would finally let go and step off. Eventually, I started seeing at the top of the platforms of the posts, I'd see scratched into the wooden post, don't forget your cape, don't forget your cape. What, what was, you know, for me, it was like this idea of what is the cape? 
What is that security that helps us leap into these unknown possibilities or to leap into this learning, this enlightenment that frees us up? Where we find ourselves, like the questions that my friend was asking at the beginning, where we find ourselves more overwhelmed with cynicism or more overwhelmed with despair, like Till Eulenspiegel as he looks at the mountains ahead. Um, what about that cape? inspires that leap. And I want to suggest to you as we wrap things up this this morning, I want to suggest that as we go into 2021 that we go in with a sense of beginner's mind. And beginner's mind is is a, it comes out of the Zen tradition, but it's really something that's found in in religious traditions around the world as a part of the faith journey. In Beginner's Mind, um, in fact, there's a book called Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind that uh, Suzuki wrote. It's a great book. And in it, he he has a quote. He says, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the expert's mind, there are only a few. Is it, you understand what that's saying? I mean, with a beginner, everything's possible. What would it be like to enter all of our moments as a beginner? All the experiences are possible. Everything is new. Let go of our presumptions. Let go of the assumptions, the judgments that we bring to the the anxiety, the fear. In my mind, that's what the scripture verse was talking about, that love casts out all fear because love is this leap of the beginner's mind. It's this leap into the connection that says all sorts of possibilities are there. As we speak about it, the redemptive possibilities that are there, the way in which God in the ground of being, the very root of possibilities for wholeness, for right relationship, for joy, for delight, all of that prop is present in our moments but it requires that beginner's mind, that entering into w these moments with a sense of sort of curiosity. I called love in this last series of hope, joy, peace, and love, I called love curiosity. This intentional, attentive engagement with the moments, with the experiences, that's curiosity, right? And that's what these kids would bring into all of their moments as they would as they would leap and shout out, don't forget your cape. Don't forget beginner's mind. Or, or the way I, Meister Eckhart, the Christian mystic, called it. He called it seeing things strange. In other words, seeing them as something new. Imagine cooking your breakfast as if you were doing it for the first time. How, how can you, how would that, what would that be like to do that? Imagine a conversation with, with your spouse or your partner as if it's for the first time. Each moment as if there's something there you don't know. What would that be like to enter our moments with beginner's mind? And then to carry that into these challenges that we face ourselves. We've, we've already made up so many judgments about our experiences that have been understandably difficult and harsh and traumatic. And yet, how do we enter these moments with a bit of beginner's mind that begins to see what else is possible? What redemptive possibilities are there? You know, we stand, we continue to fight for injustice, but how do we reach out in compassion? That's really what it means to be in the heart of love, what I think it means to be in the heart of God, as, the, as chapter 4 in 1 John suggests. It suggests this idea that we are participating with this creativity, with this curiosity, with beginner's mind. We are participating in the redemptive possibilities. Hannah Arndt, the philosopher poet, she put it this way. She said, the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. We learn by loving. We love by loving. We learn to give by giving. We experience the gift and gratitude of giving by giving. We experience the curiosity of life by curiously engaging with life. We have to approach these things with this idea of beginner. So that even the, the anxieties that, that Till Eulenspiegel feels, you know, as we move from this year into next year, can we move in that with this sense of wonder still intact? Can we move into that with this sense of imagination still fresh and alive? Can we move into this next year with this ability to let go of the grip of despair and cynicism? Can we do that? It requires this leap this beginner's mind of approaching things. And so, yeah, I'm still angry. <laughs> I'm still going to enter these moments with anger. I, I can't deny that. I'm still going to see the ups and downs. I still wonder and am anxious about whether or not we're ready as a community, as a culture, 
to move into this next year? Have we really left? Maybe we're not done here yet. But I'm also deeply in love. Right? I'm in love with life. I am. I'm in love with you. I'm in love with our community. I'm in love with this process of faith and spirituality. And so I'm going to go into this reality in pieces, as we all do, as we always do. We go in pieces. Life is upended. Hope gets suspended. And yet in spite of all of that, we still are knitted and mended together. Always into something new. A life that is larger than our illusions and our confusion and is still grounded in love. So we go. We go forward in pieces. But in our unraveling, may we find and may we be reminded and may we remind one another. We are all unraveling and traveling in this journey together. Happy New Year.